What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, before we dive into the S13 any further, although I have been working on it a little bit, but once we go there, we're not stopping. We just gotta, we gotta build. Because if you follow me on social media, you would already know that this car is being debuted at Weekfest 2023 here in Seattle. So I'm super excited to have this car on display as at one of the premier events in Seattle next summer. It's gonna be awesome. But that means we have about six months to get the car from this to driving and operating condition. We've got all the parts, we can definitely do it, but once we go there, we just gotta be full force on getting that done. But the main character of today's video is the S14. The S14 is finally back and what I would consider a perfect shell and starting point to build off of. What I mean by that is we had the core support replaced. So this is a brand new OEM Nissan core support. The front end had been in presumably a bit of a collision. It had bent the core support in up here a little bit. And what we didn't realize until we took it to the shop was that it had actually tweaked in this frame rail up here a little bit. So got it on a frame rack, straightened it out, put the new core support in. And this was all in addition to fixing the trunk as well. So in case you don't remember, let me show you. Now the trunk seemed like it had been jacked up by the spare tire well at some point in its life, which I don't know why you would ever do that, but it ended up splitting the car down at the seam here. So we took a donor car and used this panel and this panel down here. This has since been undercoated. I'll show you guys that in a second, but took those from a donor car and got this replaced completely the right way, removed at the spot welds. It's perfect. Uh, Andy at Epitome Auto Design did an excellent job on the rear end here. And then the last piece of what really made this like the perfect shell to start building on is the undercoating. Let me grab some lights and I'll show you guys real quick. So the entire underside of this car has been completely restored and just with the condition that the bottom was in, even if we dry ice blasted it, it just wasn't gonna be up to the level that I wanted it to be for this restoration. So I went ahead and had the entire bottom side of the car sandblasted. From there, driven collision center, went through and removed all the old seam sealer, reapplied new seam sealer, and I was fortunate enough to have uh, Cam on the project who has an S14 of his own and took a ton of time to get the seam sealer to look OEM and be completely factory. And the best part about this is that this job is done even better than what you would get from the factory. If you've ever been under a factory car, you'll see that there's definitely spots where it's bare primer or that kind of stuff that they just don't spray it all that thoroughly. And we've got complete coverage on this car. And you can see the front wheel well looks just incredible. Lots of nice work on the seam sealer up here. It just looks super OEM. And one of the things that is cool about this is that it's better than OEM. So this is taking it kind of even one step further than what it would have been from the factory. And one thing we fixed was this tow hook down here was completely cracked. So shout out to my friend Mason, his uh, S14 unfortunately got crushed by a tree and he let me cut this off of his car. So his S14, thank you, lives on a little bit in the Koki. But today I put up a poll on Instagram to see what you guys wanted if you wanted me to just pull the parts out for this to show you what I have for the front end or actually put it together. And as I thought, majority of you wanna see it put together. So I'm gonna go over here into just my aisle of, of shame, quite frankly, and get all the parts out of here. This is the result of having two 240 projects going on at the same time. It's just madness. So, gotta work my way through here, but we've got the hood back here. Both of the new OEM fenders are over here. I believe this is the rear bumper. The front bumper is in the car. We've got the headlights over here. Oh man, we've got so much stuff. I've got the crash beams for the car. So I'm probably gonna put a lot of this stuff on, one, so we can see the car put together, uh, and two, just so it doesn't get damaged just sitting around here. And it'll give me a little bit more room to get organized because this is just chaos. Okay, so at this point, we pretty much just have a Koki puzzle. We just gotta put it together. <laughs> so I've got all brand new OEM parts here. New OEM fenders, which are damn near impossible to find Anytime I post about these or someone sees them in a video, people will probably freak out in this video. And be like, where'd you get them? They're not available. Uh, I've had these for a long time. But we've got new fenders, bumper, headlights, 
Uh, got a, crash, a factory crash beam. Uh, this is gonna be a good chance to check and make sure that the front mount intercooler that I have actually fits behind that or to see how much trimming it's gonna take to make that work. But we just gotta put it all together. So I'm gonna unwrap the fenders and probably work on getting those up here. But this is just a good chance for me to take inventory and see like what all I have. Some of this stuff has been sitting for so long. I've been working to get this put together. Oh man, this is bringing back memories. I haven't looked at a lot of this stuff in like six months. Got the new bumper retainer over here. This is not going on, but just a, a little flex. I've found this brand new OEM front subframe in a Facebook group. And I was like, yep, I, I gotta have that. It was partially me being concerned that if the frame rail on that side was pushed in, which it was, that the subframe could have been affected, but it also was just me justifying getting a brand new subframe because that would be really sick to have. I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way, like the headlights, all the hardware, get that pushed to the side so that we can start actually working on getting stuff put on the car. Uh, like I said, I really wanna see what this car looks like complete. I've seen photos of it, but didn't get a chance to see it in person. And it's an easier way to store some of this stuff while this car sits than it just being sitting around the shop risking getting damaged. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna interrupt the fenders and start putting this car together. Okay, so we have the fenders on, but now we're at the point where I have never put together an S14 and don't exactly know how all of these parts fit together. So, I think these are the next pieces that need to go on, and from what I can tell, they bolt up right here along the frame rail, and then the... Right about now, I'm explaining the completely wrong way to put together the front end of an S14 based on how I thought it went together. About an hour from now, I found out that was not at all the correct way to put it together. Okay. Now back to the regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so I've just been slowly piecing it together, figuring out how it goes. Got the crash beam on there loosely. Need to tighten the hardware up there. You guys can't really see it, but there's a, a nut there and a bolt there. Now, one of the interesting things is, I guess I either don't need these or would run these instead of this. So one of the things that we need to take a look at is how much room I have here because I have a pretty beefy front mount intercooler that's gonna go up here. At the very least, I'm thinking that this lip on the crash beam may need to be cut off. And if it's way more intrusive than that, we could potentially look at running these instead of the crash beam and still have everything kind of in place like it would be from the factory because this is what they run in Japan, I believe. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't film, but I threw a headlight and the corner light on uh, just to see kind of how everything fits together. And then I'll show you guys on the other side. but. I'm trying to figure out, I could have sworn I had two of each of these things, but there's a bracket that goes down here that holds the retainer. So it bolts up two bolts on the retainer and then and one to the crash beam here. So it would attach over here and then in here. But I don't have the other side and I have one of these. So what I figured out is that this would be the setup, these two parts, this and one more of these four I think the left-hand side would be the equivalent of running this crash beam. What I'm gonna do now is take a look at this intercooler. This is a Treadstone intercooler that I got from Drift HQ. Huge shout out to Drift HQ. Uh, again, they are working with us on the engine build for the S13 uh, as well as the S14. So, so they took care of me down there, got me hooked up with the intercooler that is gonna be perfect for the amount of horsepower that we're trying to run. Now what I need to do is get this kind of tucked up in here and see if it's gonna fit or if this is gonna be a better option because that would basically put nothing from here all the way to here and we could easily tuck that front mount in there and still maintain the whole factory retainer and everything. Okay, so I was gonna hold or try to put the intercooler up here, but take a look at that. It's the width of my hand. And I can already tell you that that is not going to fit right there. So I think the best course of action, because I would wanna cut this out anyway to get better airflow to the intercooler while it's up there is to use these. So this is kind of the alternative. These guys mount up like where this does over here. And then this is the support that goes 
off of this piece somehow up to that. And then this is all just open in the middle, which is great for an intercooler. It's essentially how we'd have to modify this to make it work. Okay, I'm not exactly sure where I left off, but I've swapped out the full OEM crash beam for the JDM option, which is these guys here. And then the full complete setup has this little stay bracket that bolts up to the retainer, up top with two bolts, and comes down and connects to this with two bolts as well. This thing is an absolute unit of an intercooler, but I told the guys at Drift HQ that I'm essentially running the same motor build that Adam has in his green S15 and this Treadstone front mount intercooler is the same one that he's running on that car. So the cool thing is that with just a little bit of trimming in here, we're gonna be able to fit this intercooler in that location with the factory retainer. And we don't need to cut up a good front crash bar because the JDM option is gonna let us do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the other side for the headlight, and then we can start getting the bumper on here and take a look at what that looks like with the complete front end on. I cannot get over how good this front end looks. Like I know we've all seen a JDM Koki front end many of times, but it's just so good. It's such a good looking front end. Oh my God. Okay, let's take a look at the rear of the car and get this all together. So moving on to the rear of the car, I got the trunk open here so you can see the inner panel that we replaced much better. Uh, so you can see, like I said, we replaced this whole piece here. All the bare metal has been epoxy primered, new seam sealer has been put in, and the plan is just to paint this when the car gets painted. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this crash bar on so we can get the rear bumper on. Rear bumper's in here, and I've got the tail lights just resting up there. We're gonna get all this stuff on, along with the Koki wing, so we can get an idea of what this car looks like much more complete. <laughs> All right, if you've been following me for a while or following the S14 build, you probably know what's in this box, but this is definitely one of my more like holy grail pieces for sure. This is a brand new old stock S14 Koki wing, like the JDM Koki wing. And Isaiah, if you're watching this, huge shout out once again for selling this to me. I like, it's another one of those parts where it's just like, I can't believe I found this. Literally the day that I was gonna buy this off of a, a site in Japan that had it, they sold out overnight. So bought this thing the next day. Let's go ahead and throw it on the car and see what it looks like. Okay, as you can probably tell by the super trash fitment of the bumper down there, this is very loosely mocked up, but holy shit. I just absolutely love how these parts look on this car. And the fact that the arrow on this car and the hatch are all OEM, the fact that Nissan designed these parts and they look this good, the designers at Nissan in the 90s were on something good. This is just amazing. Love this wing. Love these taillights, the bumper, just how it all comes together. The only thing we're missing back here is the rear spats. Um, and Doki Dori makes a polyurethane option, which I know it's not OEM, but I think I'm going to opt for that because the OEM ones, if you can even find them, are just so thrashed at this point that why pay $1,000 for something that feels like paper mache when you can get something that's a quarter of the price, 
little more durable, actually a lot more durable, and I know it's good quality. It is absolutely insane to me to see this car with all the body panels on it. I've seen pieces of the body panels on it over the last year that I've owned it, but this is the first time that I've seen it with all the new body panels on it, and it just makes this car look entirely different. Like, I feel like I'm meeting a new person for the first time, seeing it with the front end on it. It is an entirely different car in the shop, and seeing this car, with the 13 hatch. Gets me so excited for when both these cars are done and we can enjoy them together and just see them complete on the ground. It's gonna be absolutely epic. But in the next one, we're gonna be working on the S13, getting all the sound editing out in that. That video will be up on Thursday. So until then, I put two videos up on the screen for you to enjoy. It does help me out a ton if you watch those. I'll see you guys in the next one.